Sir Michael. Bear this sealed brief with wicked haste to the Lord's group. This to the Lord Marshal and all the rest to whom they are directed. If you knew how much they do import, you would make haste. My good Lord, I guess they're tenor. Like enough you do. Tomorrow, good Sir Michael, is the day wherein the fortunes of 10,000 men must bide the touch. For Sir Shrewsbury, as I am truly given to understand, the king, with mighty and quick raised power, meets with Lord Harry. And I fear, Sir Michael, what with the sickness of Northumberland, whose power was in the first proportion, and what with Owen Glendower's absence thence, who with them was abrated sinner too, and comes not in, or ruled by prophecy, I fear the power of Percy is too weak to wage an instant struggle with the king. Why, my good lord, you need not fear. There is Douglas and Lord Mortimer. No, Mortimer is not there. But there is Vernon. There is Lord Harry Percy. There is Nordic. And there is my a Lord of Worcester and a head of noble warriors gallant gentlemen. And so there is. But yet the king hath drawn the special head of all the land together. The Prince of Wales, Lord John of Lancaster, the noble Westmoreland, and warlike Blunt, and many Moco rivals and dear men of estimation and command in arms. Doubt not, my lord, they shall be well opposed. I hope no less. Yet needful tis to fear, and so to prevent the worst, Sir Michael, speed. For if Lord Percy thrive not, the king, ere he dismiss his power, he means to visit us, for he hath heard of our confederacy, and tis but wisdom to make strong against him. Therefore haste. I must go and write again to other friends. And so farewell, Sir Michael. See.